Hello, my brothers and sisters. Uh, this is series 170. And this is the last part of chapter 13, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, and it's 8 through 13. And we're going to be talking about love is permanent. Love is permanent. There is no doubt that love is here to stay. The power of love in Jesus Christ is here to stay. Nobody can destroy it. Nobody can take it away. So we are might as well get used to it. Love is here to stay. And love will change us. And if it don't change us, because we have a choice to either do, either love or not love. So therefore, if you don't, if you don't want to change and you want to stay in your own selfish way, then uh, God has prepared a place for you too. And so, but just remember, love is permanent. It cannot go away. Um, okay, now I'm going to start at first. I mean, no, uh, 1 Corinthians 13 and verse 8. And it says, prophecy and speaking in unknown languages and spiritual knowledge will be will become useless but love will will last forever everything else is going to be useless but love it, it, it'll never go away number nine says now our knowledge is partial and incomplete and even the gift of prophecy revealed only part of the whole picture. Only the gift of only gift of prophecy reveals only the part, only a part of the whole picture. Prophecy only reveal the knowledge of God, uh, the obedience of God. These are what prophets brought, and they showed you um, how to live. Why you should live that way. And they told us that there was a Messiah coming. And he would do things that no other man in this whole world has ever done. That he will save us from our enemy. And give us a new life. That was the prophecy that they had gave. That somebody was coming to save us from our sins. And that's what happened. And this person would come in the power of love. Not in the power of hate or destruction. But in the power of love. To reveal God's true nature. Is the power of love. Eternal love. Everlasting love. And so number 10 says, But when the time of perfection comes, these partial things will become useless. Number 11 says, When I was a child, I spoke as a child. Uh, I spoke and thought and uh, reasoned as a child. But when I grew up, I put away childish things. <laughs> Excuse me. That's what all of us are supposed to be doing, putting away childish things. Putting away our evil things, our selfish things, and clinging to the things of Christ. Those things that will give us eternal, lasting life. And um, Christ brought heaven down here on earth so we could have a perfect example of what it was, which was the power of love living through Christ himself. God's kind of love. God's got a got a love, a love that forgives, a love that don't um, uh, do you no harm, a love that casts out all fear. But most of all, a love that don't hold any grudges, that's willing to forgive and forget and throw your sins in the depths of the sea. That's the kind of love that we need badly. That's the kind of love that God, Christ, want us to allow those kinds of love to live in us. 
the one that love your brother and love your sister, the one that says nothing but peace and joy is, is ours if we want it. Long suffering, all the fruits of the spirit is ours. It's for us, it's for our taking. Do you really want it? I know I do. And number 12 says, now we see things imperfectly like puzzle, puzzling reflections in a mirror. But then we will see everything with perfect uh, charity. All that I know now is partial and incomplete. But then I will know everything complete. Just as God knows now, me knows me completely. Uh, number 13 says, three things will, will last forever. Faith, hope, and love. They're going to last forever. Uh, the greatest of these is love. The greatest. There's nothing else greater than love. Nothing. And now I'm going to read the footnotes to you. And uh, number eight, the number eight footnotes says in the verse, in verses one and two, Paul spoke about three gifts. The, and they were prophecy, tongues, and knowledge. He said that without love, they had no value. Here, uh, he, uh, here he contrasts love with let. With these, with these gifts, love is permanent. The gift, the gifts will all become unnecessary. Put all your trust in the power of love for, from Christ. Put all your trust in the power of love. Number, uh, number, number verses, uh, footnotes on verses uh, nine through ten. In this life, our, our knowledge of God can never be complete. One day we will, not, we will no longer need anything that is not complete. That will happen in uh, uh, eternity when Christ comes again. Verses uh, 11 through 12, Paul uses two examples. To show what he means. The first example says. An adult does not speak or think like a child. And he does not reason like a child. The behavior of a child is only stubble. Which he, while he remains a child. Uh, spiritual gifts are necessary for the growth of the church, but they will no longer be necessary in eternity. And then uh, number two says, uh, the Corinthian was famous for good, good, for good mirrors. They did not have clean, clear glass then, so they made them out of metal. John said, we know that when Jesus appears, we shall be like him because we shall see him as he is. And that's in 1 John 3, 1, 2, 3, 1 through 3. Number, the, uh, number one says, see how, see how very much our father loves us for he calls us his children. And that is what we are. But the people who belong to to this world doesn't recognize that, doesn't realize that we are God's children because they don't know him. Number two, verse two says, Dear friends, we are, re we are already God's children, but he has not yet shown us what we will be like when Christ appears. But we do know that we will be like him, for we 
will see him as he really is. Uh, verse 3 says, And all who have this eager expectation will keep, will keep themselves pure, just as he is pure. God already knows us completely. In the next age, we shall understand God's ways. We cannot understand him, understand them completely in this life. But in the next life, we will totally, totally understand everything he is. In the New Jerusalem, we will understand everything that Christ is and what God is, what the Holy Spirit is. Because they will live with us in the New Jerusalem. God the Father and God the Father, the, the, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That all three will be living with us in one. And then verse, um, the footnotes on verse 13 says, Faith, hope, and love seems to have been a well-known group of qualities. Paul speaks about them in order in, 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 in another letter. For example, Thess Thessalonians uh, 1 and 3, Colossians 1, 4, and 5. Um, and get those and read those, please. They 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 give a lot of uh, information. Uh, these it says these three words explain that the whole of the Christian's life in this word in this world, Christians have faith that God will forgive them because of Christ's sacrifice. They have they have hope for the future because of Christ's resurrection. They live a life of faith and hope among Christian brothers and sisters who they love. Of, um, of these three, only love will remain in eternity. Only love. The power of the power and love of Jesus Christ. That's the only thing that's going to remain. Faith will no longer be necessary. Hope will become uh, knowledge. Love is the greatest because God himself is love. 1 John 4 and 8. Um, a, 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 a friendship with, with him will never end, but it will continue into eternity. And that's what I mean. We should be living right now in the eternal realm of God. That's the way Paul lived. He lived in the eternal realm. He let the world go, the world way of doing things, the world way of life. But he took on the wholeness of the eternal realm of God. And this is what Paul is trying to get the Corinthians to understand. Unless you take love, as your number one goal, you will never see heaven. You will never make it in heaven. Because you must have the true, unadulterated love <coughs> of Jesus Christ in order to make it in. Love is the glue that holds everything together for you and I. We Everything is based off of love. Christ coming and dying on the cross was based off of love. Christ freeing you from your, from your desire and destruction of sin was based off of love. That's why he came. That's why he came so that you could have peace. You can have joy. Now we can turn around and, 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 and encourage our brothers that they can have the same thing. My God, my God. Now we're going to read the first verse of Scripture. Um, first verse of scriptures, uh, uh, come, Scripture comes off of uh, verse uh, 8 of 1 Corinthians uh, 13 and 8. It says, um, The 70 returns with joy. And this is coming out of Luke 10, 17 and 20. And here's what Jesus is talking about his disciples. 
and he sits down, sits down and explains some things to him. He, he was always having to explain things to his disciples because they didn't know. And he was a teacher, so he had to teach them. They didn't always catch on, but as they went along with him, living with him, seeing how he acts, seeing how he talked, and seeing what he would do, and seeing how he explained things to them, then they became better known. Uh, they became better uh, as far as knowing how he is and how his father is. So they started to take on the attributes of God in Christ. And so number 17 says, okay, this is Luke 10, 17 through 20. Number 17 says, when the 70, 72 disciples returned, they had went off, Jesus had sent them off and to preach to the lost souls and to heal the sick. Here's what, the, here's what happened after they came back. They, they, they joyfully uh, reported to him Jesus, Lord, even the demons obey us when we use your name. Even the demons obey. They were happy about that thing. They were joyful about that thing. Number 18 says, yes, he told them, I saw Satan fall from heaven like lightning. Number nine says, look, I have given you authority over all the powers of the enemy. And you can walk among snakes and scorpions and, and crush them. Nothing will injure you. Uh, number 20 says, but don't rejoice because evil spirits obey you. Don't do that. Rejoice because your name, your names are uh, registered in heaven, which is the lamb of the book of life. Rejoice over that. Don't rejoice because of I give you power to destroy the enemy, to cast out demons, to heal the sick. Don't because you'll get proud over that. You'll build up pride. You'll build up, build up envy. Now you see somebody else do it. Uh -uh, you want the only you want to be the only one to do it. That's what pride is. You can't do that. Everybody works together in in, in the body of Christ, and this is why love is so great. This is why you must have it because you won't get envy. You won't build up strife because your fellow man, fellow man is doing the same thing you're doing. And you want to be the only one. No, it's not about that. That's how Satan thinks. God wants you to love one another. He had to get Peter and Paul together. They had differences, but finally they, they solved those differences and they loved one another. Because they own, they're working for the same master. And he's teaching them the same thing. Love your brothers and sisters. And this is what it's all about. Um, and this right here, when he said that you would cast out uh, um, de de demonic spirits and, and, and you would crush the scorpions and snakes. These are people that come to you every day. These are the demonic spirits that come to you every day. And you'll be able to crush them. You'll be able to cast them out. He said, when you pray, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. So this is the golden opportunity to do the work for the Lord. And don't get puffed up. Don't get proud. But just thank God that he allowed you to do it. He's allowing you to love his, he's allowing you to use the tools of the love power. The only reason he gave it to you because of his love. That's the only reason. It's just like if you go to class, what are they going to do? You're going to give you a pencil, paper, and pen. Erase them. They give you that so you can do your homework. There's no need to get proud of it and pick at somebody else because they don't have it because everybody gets the same thing. Everybody get the same, do the same work. So this is the only thing Christ is saying. You get the same work to do as the rest of the apostles. I don't care what kind of position you have, you still do the same work. Feed my people. Feed my sheep. That's all you're supposed to do. And don't, don't get so crazy over to where it go to your head. But what do you say? 
You just thank God that your name is written in the, in the Lamb Book of Life. Okay, the second scripture I have for you, and that and that comes that is for verse ten, and it says, uh, and this is out of Jeremiah 31, 30, 33 through thirty four. And it says, this is what the Lord says. This is the Lord talking to Jeremiah. And number 32 says, this covenant will not be like the one I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand and brought them out of the land of Egypt. They broke, ooh, listen at this. They broke that covenant. Israel did. Uh, though I love them as a husband loves his wife, said the Lord. He said, I love you like I love, I love a wife. That's how much love I got for you. But you still disobeyed me. And he had to punish a lot of people. A lot of the older people, they didn't go into the promised land because they failed to do what the Lord said do. And so those people were destroyed. And number 33 says, but this is the new covenant I will make with you, with the people of Israel after those days, said the Lord. I will put my instruction deep, deep in there, deep in, deep within them. I'm going to put it in their hearts, their mind, deep within them. And I will write them on their heart. I will be their God and they will be my people. He said, I'm going to do a new thing because I'm going to send my son. He's going to teach those 12 disciples and they're going to turn around and, 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 and teach others how to do the same thing. On the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit filled the room like fire. A terrible windstorm came through and the Holy Ghost landed on everybody. These people went back. This was the love of God. The power of love came down and touched these people, which is the spirit of the living God. And when these people saw them talking, talking in different tongues, that's what the Polish spirit do. It brings you the, the, the speaking in tongues and the knowledge that you need to carry out God's will. And these people, they came from all over the world, different, different nations. And these Jews that had, that had went to these different countries came back on the day of Pentecost, which was gathered, which was done every year. And they came back and they heard about the Holy Spirit. They heard Jesus teaching. Peter taught it to them, preached to them. And when they all was filled with the Holy Spirit, when they went back home, that's how the gospel got spread all over the world because they told people about it. They spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. And um, I'm going to get into, that, get into that more when I go into chapter 14 and talk about the speaking in tongues. And then number 34 says, and they will not, they will no need, they will not need to teach their neighbors or will they need to teach their relative said saying you should know the lord for everyone from the least to the greatest will know me already said the lord and i will and i will forgive their weak uh, wickedness and i will never listen at this he said i'm not going to remember their sins no more now how now this is the power of love I'm telling you about. The power of love said, I ain't going to remember your sin. I don't care what you did. I ain't going to remember it no more. You treat me like a dog, but that's okay. The power of love says, I'm going to love you anyway. James says, husband, love your wife as Christ also loved the church. Then he said, wife, submit yourselves unto your husband. Submit yourself. So if Christ comes back and we're going to marry Christ, he's our husband. So what are we supposed to do? Submit ourselves to Christ. We submit ourselves to the power of love. The man, the one who invented love, the one who created love, 
the one who is love. So this is what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be creating love with our neighbors, our fellow man. We're supposed to be giving out love with our neighbors and our fellow man. Just like Christ did. As I follow Christ, you follow me. What well, Paul said. So that's what we're supposed to be doing. Following, following Paul and following Christ. As Christ followed God, that's what we're supposed to do. Follow Christ too. Uh, and scripture, verse four, verse 13, the last scripture. And uh, this is coming out of Matthew 22, 34 and 40. And this is talking about the most important commandment. Most important commandment. And uh, 30, 30, 34 through 40. And this is the scripture for, for, for verse 13 of 1 Corinthians 13 verse. And it says, but when the Pharisees heard, we're talking about the Pharisees and the Sadducees now. But when the first, but, but when the but when the Pharisees heard that he said he, he had silenced, silenced the Sadducees with his with his reply, they met together and questioned him again. Now the Pharisees and Sadducees got together. They want to question Jesus. They want to see what he really meant. 35 says, one of them, an expert in religious law, expert, he all got all kinds of knowledge of the word of God, tried to trap him with this question. Number 36 says, teacher, which is the most important commandments in the law of Moses? And then number 37, Jesus replied, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. 38 says, this is the first and greatest commandment. Just like love, love is the greatest commandment. Here's where it came from. Love is the commandment of God. You've got to know how to love first. God Almighty. All your soul, mind, body, and strength. Number 36, 39 says the second is, 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 is equal important. Love your neighbor as yourself. Not only love me, but love your neighbor. Because I am the power of love. I extended to you the power of love. Now you extend to your neighbor the power of love. Number 40 says, they, the entire law and all the de demands of the prophecies are based on these two commandments. All the prophecy is demanded, it's demanded, is based off of these two prophecies. These two commandments right here. The prophets came and taught and preached the very same thing. They prophesied the Messiah coming and what he will do. The power of love is coming, y'all. The power of love is coming back on the second turn, on the second coming. He's coming. The power of love is coming now. Yes. And he will judge everybody. That's the power of love. There is no failure in the power of love. There is no fear in the power of love. There is no arguing in the power of love. The power of love is just what it says. It's all about love and not about anything else. It's just harmony, love, peace, joy. Every morning, every evening, every lunch hour, 24-7. In the New Jerusalem, that's how it's going to be. When he said, eat of that tree, when he told Adam and Eve to eat of the tree of life, we will be that tree of life. We will eat of that tree in the garden. In the New Jerusalem. And we will be just like Christ. 
We will love each other. And Christ is saying, join me. All people who are called by my name, join me. Then another scripture, I have another scripture for the same verse, 13. And this is John, 1 John 4, 7 through 8. And it says, dear friends, let us continue to love one another. For love comes from God. Anyone who loves is a child of God and knows God, number eight says, but anyone who does not love does not know God. For God is love. God is love, folks. This is why Paul wrote this chapter. This chapter here covers a whole Bible the whole Bible, the whole attitude of people. It covers every attitude there is in, this, in, in, in the word of God. The power of love is eternal. It will never fail. It will never go away. The power of love now, and this is what you must take on. This is what you must grab if you want to make it in. And you got to let all that other stuff go. Let all that hatred go. Let all that unbelief go. And take on the power of love like Jesus did. He showed you how to do it through the word of God. He showed you through his disciples how to do it. So that's what we need to do. Oh my God. Thank you, Jesus, for teaching this lesson. And giving your people the knowledge and, 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 and wisdom that they need. To grow strong in you, Lord God. And I bind every spirit that's evil in, in the people that hear your voice right now. And I command them to be loose right now in the name of Jesus. But I bind the Holy Spirit in their lives. The wisdom of, 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 of our Father God. The Holy Spirit. I bind that and command that to be loose right now. Into your hearers, into your the listeners and the hearers of your word right now in the name of Jesus. My precious Father, we thank you for your love and your grace and your total concern for your people. Help us, O oh Lord, to do the right thing so that we can live eternal with you, Lord God, and we can live in love and not hate. This I pray in Jesus' name. God bless the hearers that's under the sound of the voice that speaks through me, which is Jesus Christ. God bless you. God keep you. Amen. Amen. Amen.